Hey guys, Adam Savage here in my cave with a, um, well this eventually will be a box build, but uh, it is about a new addition of equipment to the cave. But to talk about the new piece of equipment, I want to talk about the lathe for a second. So uh, obviously the business end of a lathe is the work holding. This is the chuck. Um, I heard this the other day in a video on Cronova Engineering and I really liked it and I really agree with it. Cronova pointed out that the four jaw chuck is the only truly accurate chuck for a lathe and that everything else is about, every other chuck you might use is about convenience. This is entirely true. Uh, this is a six jaw true set. So I can, if I need extreme concentricity out of this, I can use these four Allen bolts to adjust it to a very high level of concentricity, but only for that diameter. Um, but this is all academic. We, this is how lathes work. You chuck something in, you put a tool in, you get a shape. Uh, and mine's got a nice big two inch bore so I can take a big piece of, of uh, this is Teflon, um, and I can pop it in there, clamp it down. Uh, but what if I've got a lot hanging out? Uh, I will tell you that even in the most extreme case of like extreme pieces of steel, that there would be deflection on this if you started to use a tool on it. This this moves. It it can deflect. In general, you want to do all of your lathe work as close to the chuck as you possibly can. That's the highest rigidity. Uh, some of you noticed last year that I got rid of my compound slide. Uh, and I have a new system where I use a non-compound slide for most of my lathe work because it increases the rigidity. It's all about rigidity. So how do you affect a piece like this uh, on the lathe? Well, I think you've seen me do it. Uh, I simply chuck it close to the end, face it, and then I use a centering bit. These are basically so beefy they can't move in any way. and these help you guarantee that you've got a concentric centered hole and you chuck that into a chuck and you do that. So now you know you've got a centered hole here. You then bring this out the degree to which you want and you go get what's called a live center. That's this, this is a live center. Live means it spins. Um, and I chuck that into my tailstock like that. And I put it in the hole that I've made, which I know is on center, and then this whole thing turns uh, concentrically. For the most part, let's be clear, for perfect concentricity, you should be turning between centers, which is a whole different thing. I'm not even gonna get into describing it because it's, uh, it's just not germane to this discussion. Um, so uh, that's pretty straightforward about dealing with long material that is solid. What if you have a piece of pipe? Well, to be fair, if you had a piece of pipe whose opening was smaller than this, you could still use this live center. But anything bigger than that, you need a bigger live center. Well, luckily, I've got one of those. Uh, this is a bigger live center. It has replaceable uh, noses that can go in here. Uh, I've got a drawer full of those. Um, and by the way, live center refers to a center by the way, live center refers to a center that can spin. This is a dead center. It doesn't spin. And these also have their uses. But we were talking about, like, what if you have a piece of tubing like this? Well, then you use this. This is a big bull nose, and this was expensive, but it is also live. It spins. Oh, uh, yeah. This is fantastic. This, this, gets me up to, uh, this gets me up to five inches in diameter which is stellar. But recently, I had occasion to wonder, what if I even needed something even bigger than that? This is exactly five inches, but let's say this is six inches. Well, I just bought a piece of equipment that can accommodate this. So in order to hold on to a piece like this, you actually open up your jaw. Well, you can grab them from the outside or from the inside. Uh, on something like this big, on an eight inch chuck, I'm gonna grab it from the inside. So I'm waiting till these uh, chuck jaws all spread out enough to grab it on the inside. There we go. There's one. 
So, this is my new piece of equipment. It is also a live center with the same Morse Taper 4 backing, and it spins. Now, these are purchasable items. They're over a grand if you can find them. Uh, I managed to build this one, and I built it off camera, just to please myself. Um, here's how it went. I bought an MT4 shank with a 12 millimeter pin sticking out of its end. That's it. Then I found some bearings with a 12 millimeter uh, ID and I pushed those onto the pin and then I milled out the back of this chuck to receive the bearings in an interference fit, which means the bearings were 0.375. I made the whole 0.374 and then I press fit everything together and it's beautiful. So watch, here's how it works. Put it in there, open up the, bring in the chuck and open up the jaws until it grabs. There we go. And now I've got a really nice stable hold and I've got replaceable jaws in this. I can actually go out to almost six and a half inches on this. Yeah, this is very, very, oh, almost seven inches actually, but this is super, super useful to me. I've been wanting one for a while. Look, this is not the kind of thing I'm gonna use more than like once a year, but. So what I wanna do is I wanna build a box for this live center with a set of outside jaws and inside jaws and this chuck key. I'm gonna build a box for all three of these.
There we go. Bring it out, put it in. Great. Oh, that's great. I like that. So I can pop the whole thing out like this, pop the whole thing back in like that. Ah, I need one thing that is, hang on. Oh, Christ, did I really just do that? Did I really just put this in upside down? I did, I did. Let's see if it still works. It does, even though I put in the knobs on the wrong side. And that still works. Put it down. Right. Yeah, well, I put it in roughly center, so that's great. Uh, so, uh, there we go. Seven. Five. And three quarters. Ooh. That's great. Just like that. That's how I want it. I want it. There it is. Uh, so it can be lifted out. Everything can be stored in there. And it can be carried around and things don't fall out. Okay, uh, so there you go. Uh, my live center box holds the chuck key, reversible jaws, uh, and the chuck key itself uh, without incident. Um, I know I had some knobs in there to hold the but I installed it upside down. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter really, because this is still not gonna fall out, see? So uh, it's a box that I can carry around and it keeps my live, my new live center chuck uh, sacrosanct and healthy and unrusted. Yeah, that's the goal. Thank you guys for joining me for this quickie little bit of shop infrastructure. Before I go, I wanna say it's Saturday. I just came in because I was inspired to do this because I was so excited about it. Uh, but now I'm gonna go home and cool off because it's like 80 degrees here in San Francisco, which I know is not hot, probably as hot as where you are, but for us, it's killing us. Um, I went to a garage sale this morning and check out the brayer that I bought. This is an unbelievable bit of kit. And it was just included with a bunch of other crap I bought at a garage sale. I mean, I bought some really good crap. And this was included. I just wanted to share. Thank you guys for joining me. I will see you next time.